Hey there everybody, welcome back to my 31 paintings for the new year series. I'm doing these 8x8 eight eight inch canvases in a variety of different styles just to show a lot of the various beautiful techniques that you can use in acrylic pouring. So today I'm doing a ribbon pour, which is also the same as a dirty pour but without silicone. Um, so I've taped off the back of my canvas and put these thumbtacks in it because this is kind of a messy technique and um, I want to keep the back a little bit clean. Okay, so the colors that I'm using, this is my uh, sort of blue and turquoise color scheme, which is Caribbean blue, uh, metallic teal, uh, dark navy, which is a mix of phthalo blue and black, uh, some white house paint, and some metallic blue. Okay, so, um, for a ribbon pour, you can either do it two ways. You can either layer all your paints in one cup, which is why it can also be called a dirty pour. Dirty pours are mostly with silicone though. Um, so you can either lay it in, layer it in one cup or you can use one of those special split cups where it has different compartments for different colors. I don't have one of those yet. So I'm gonna be showing you the simplest version, which is just in one cup. Uh, so this is a three ounce cup for an eight by eight inch canvas. You need about four to four and a half ounces of paint. I don't have any five ounce paper cups. So I'm gonna put my colors into this three ounce cup and I'm gonna start it on kind of a, a pillow, like a, a base, um, base layer so that there's a white background that I'm putting my ribbon across. So let's start layering the colors. I'm going to start with some metallic blue and then some white and I'm going to try to do two or three layers of each color. Then the dark navy then the metallic teal and then the Caribbean blue. And I'm gonna fill this cup up pretty full because I want, I want just about three ounces of the colors. Then I'm starting back over again with my metallic blue. Can you see the colors, Larry? Yeah, there you go, you can see them. So I try to make pretty neat layers. If your paint stacks well, you don't have to pour it in on the side. You can just kind of pour it in on the top. Okay, and then as you get to the top, you wanna to start making your layers much smaller because when the top pours out, it's not, it, it hasn't had time to mix itself. tiny layers in the top. I don't know how necessary that is. Okay, so this is this is probably two and a half ounces of paint. Beautiful colors. I think it's going to look excellent. So I'm going to move that off to the side. And the reason I'm using a paper cup, I'll show you when I pour it out, but I'm actually going to pinch it to make a narrower pouring channel. Okay, so, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to bump you like that. I have a just a bottle of some sort of pre-mixed paint. So I'm just gonna pour some out in the middle. Just to kind of add a base covering. Wow, it is so, so filled with air bubbles. Cover the corners a little bit. 
so that it's easier for those to get covered when I tilt it. Okay, if you have a kitchen torch and you need to pop air bubbles, this is the best way to do it, but you can also blow on it and the carbon dioxide from your breath will pop a lot of those air bubbles. But torching is easier if you have one. Okay, that's got a lot of the air bubbles. And, oh, I don't know if I said this, but all of my paint is mixed with Floetrol and water. There's no silicone. Floetrol is my pouring medium. And then depending on the consistency of the paint, it's either like a one-to-one -one paint to Floetrol all the way up to a three parts Floetrol to one part paint, depending on how thick the paint is. Thin craft paints might only need one-to-one -one, and uh, thicker tube paints or metallic paints might need uh, two or three parts of Floetrol before you even add water. Torch a few more bubbles because there's, there's a lot in there. Okay. So here's our cup. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I'm gonna pinch it so I've got a finer tip. And then you wanna just pour it out. You can pour it out in really straight lines or in kind of a scattering. It's gonna start out with a wider strip and then the further down to the end of the cup you get, it's gonna come out in thinner ribbons. So just try to make whatever interesting pattern you want and then we'll stretch it out. So I've got some cells popping up from the metallic paints, which is really cool. Even without silicone, you can get some really neat effects. So I'm just pouring my leftover paint on the corners, but there's not much of it left in the cup. Okay, I am going to torch it before I stretch because those bubbles are cool. So again, if you have a torch, um, it can help to create cells even without silicone because the air bubbles that are naturally in the paint, when you pop them with the torch, it creates, you know, the, uh, that, that bubble cell pattern. Okay, this is looking beautiful. Let me get some gloves because this is the messy part. Okay, so you pick up your canvas and just rotate it a little bit to make sure that your paint is flowing all as one unit. Okay. If you kind of move it side to side as you tip it down, it helps to keep the shape more consistent without losing it. All right, over the corner and back, whoa. Okay, I'm going to come over to this corner now. So you take the weight of your paint kind of back to the middle of the canvas before sending it over again. So I'm tilting it back now. Okay, wow. Look how pretty that is already. Okay, so I'm walking it this way. bringing it back. And one final corner to cover and back. So the last thing to do, wow, that's so pretty. I'm gonna torch it one more time just to see if there's any other cells I can bring up. And then I'm gonna get my final final layout by just shifting it around to get it looking exactly the way I like. 
So ribbon pours, if you want a lot of reaction like this, using Floetrol and using metallic paints, Floetrol itself is very reactive. Metallic paints are very reactive. So those can help give you cells while at the same time leaving these nice beautiful stripes of more solid colors. So it's a great sort of best of both worlds. Okay, I need to look at this and figure out. This is the part I like the least. So let me see if I can just carefully walk the paint back this way and get rid of a little bit of that. Whatever that stripe was, the color was kind of muddy. Okay, I gotta look at this for a second to make sure I'm happy with it. So, give me a second. All right, I think I'm happy with that. I don't know exactly which way is going to be up, but the pattern itself is gorgeous. I'm going to give it one final torch just to make sure I'm getting those air bubbles up, but then I'm done. All right, let me give you a close up. Okay, so here we have it. I think this is the orientation that I like the best. But look at those beautiful cells that just came up from the paint reacting with itself. So cool, so interesting. And even without the bubbles, the, the ribbon effect would be really cool. All right, thanks for joining me for this one. I hope you keep watching more videos in this series and good luck making your ribbon force. See you later.